and good morning. Our timeline today is um, January the 20th, 1991 at 9 a.m. And we're coming from Little Rock, Arkansas in the United States. And right off the bat, we have a lot going on just right here. Uh, Mercury and Uranus look like they're conjunct in Sagittarius, in the crown of the Sagittarian, which is humanitarian. And you're talking about communication, technology, industrial revolution, uh, just big, big dynamic change on a physical level here, uh, material world where Uranus is concerned. Uh, Saturn, Jup uh, Saturn, Sun can almost conjunct. It looks like, uh, I'm going to check because it looks like Saturn might still be in Sagittarius. And uh, the Sun in Capricorn. Can I, I want to pull a close star, but the Sun is so bright, it's it keeps popping in and out. I'm not going to get a close one. Let me back up and get one that is in line here. Let's take this one. This will draw the line for us. Yeah, Saturn is in Sag Sagittarius and the sun is coming into the mouth of the goat. And I'm used to seeing that right there, so I know that it's uh, Capricorn. So you have Venus and Capricorn in a cardinal Earth sign. Saturn, Uranus, Mercury in a fire sign, uh, the humanitarian. Let's see where Mars is. Okay, got Mars in Taurus, which is a fixed Earth sign. And uh, this is Venus's house, and this is her opposition. Uh, Mars, masculine, Venus, feminine, and uh, as a matter of fact, Mars is sitting right under the Pleiades, the seven stars, the seven sisters. Uh, some refer to it as the seven angels of the book of Revelation. Uh, angels are stars. Okay, we got Uranus. We need Jupiter. I need to cut my fingernails. I keep hitting the wrong key. Jupiter in Cancer. All by its lonesome. This chart's pretty well gonna be looks like it's gonna be spread out. And Jupiter is gonna be opposite Saturn, opposite the Sun, sitting there in Capricorn, Sagittarius. So you have a church opposing government and state with the sun at its back at that point. Uh, we need Neptune. Oh, we got Neptune doing. Did I do? That is Neptune. Wow. Throw in another one in the bunch here. Neptune, Uranus, Mercury, Saturn, Sun, Venus. All in these two signs. And I think we're going to get lucky here with Pluto. Not being in Virgo for this one but still highly affected because you're going to be alive when this change happens. It is happening. I reckon anybody watching this is alive. Uh, yeah, Pluto out of Virgo clearly into Libra at this point in 91. Which again, used to be the claws of the eagle or the serpent in the claws of the eagle which is very telling in itself let me confirm 
Yeah, I can confirm that it's Libra. And for really the most important where this chart's going to be concerned as far as the Pluto and Virgo generation goes, uh, this chart is not affected by that. So your big player here is going to be the moon. Oh, it just puts up what it wants to, don't it? I don't even know how it did that, but I'm going to let it remain. Moon in Pisces and a crescent moon at that. I can almost see that from here. Let's zoom in. Yeah, just coming off of a going into a day moon. It's a waxing moon. It's waxing on the right, so it's getting smaller, headed to a new moon, or what I refer to as the day moon. So, let's back this up. I guess I want to pull around here. Oh, I hate all that. I don't even know how I did that. I really don't. My fingernail hit something on the keyboard. Let's see if I can get rid of any of this information. see if I can do it down here. I don't even know what I hit to make it do that. I might have to relaunch this whole thing. Is that it? There we go. Get a look at this Uranus-Mercury conjunction. That needs to be looked up because <clears throat> that's almost communication on a technological level, level in the brain, literally. And then with Neptune sitting right there, so you have Earth on both ends, technology with communications. The church, I'm at the state in conjunction. Literally, uh, the only thing good about this Saturn Sun con coming conjunct right here is um, Saturn's trying to come into its own house of Capricorn, but it's being opposed by the Sun. Uh, it's being combusted by the sun. Saturn is so close to the sun that it literally, the sun will strip Saturn of its powers. But you're still talking about two malefics here. And when the sun is stripping Saturn of its power, the sun takes on the attributes of Saturn. Now, we call them sun kings for a reason, but Saturn is supposed to be the state, government, all that. So these two already have a lot in common. So um, I would call this a white hot sun at that point when you've got Saturn just crawling up it into the house of Capricorn. And only balance there is Venus, who rules mutable Earth, is now in a fixed Earth. I mean in a cardinal Earth. And Mercury, who rules... Uh, I got that backwards. Yeah, Venus is fixed Earth in a cardinal sign, and Mercury is mutable Earth. That mean, And man is made out of Earth dirt, so that's the changing man. And right here I'm seeing the man changing by technology in the sign of, in the forehead of the humanitarian, almost wearing it like a crown. So that in itself is a little unusual. And then our third, who is our third? Oh, Saturn. So you have all three Earth signs, Earth sign planets right here in front of you. Venus, Saturn, and Mercury in play right here, uh, right before you were born. I actually remember this week of January the 20th, 1991. It was a very time-changing for me, my birthday falls in that week, and I happen to remember it very well. 
and everything changed for me that year, uh, especially the next month in February, which Saturn and the Sun would have been full blown in Capricorn, and every did thing did change. You're looking at a date right here this week, January the 20th, 1991, where um, we had a Gulf War going on. If you remember correctly, it was George Bush Sr. walked into Iraq the first time, and they all laid down their guns and surrendered in the desert. There was no war because the Iraqis literally wanted out. They surrendered. And I remember that very clearly. De it, uh, I don't remember if that one was Desert Storm or something like that. But I do remember that. It was This whole year was very time-changing for me. And now that I'm looking at this chart, it makes sense. I've never actually gone back and looked at this chart. Uh, so now I totally get it, especially with cancer opposing, I meant... Jupiter in Cancer opposing this dynamic right here, which is completely opposite on the board. And then Pluto over here in the scales. If we look at it, it's just Libra, right? The balance, the scales. Uh, I don't know so much about justice because to, it's my understanding that these scales had to do with money, right? When you went into the marketplace, and Julius Caesar put this here. And when you went into the marketplace, it was about the scales of the economy and trade, not justice. And so this is this whole sign, since it's been put here with Scorpio, has been very warped. And um, it's telling of what it actually means. And the only key to something's not right here is that this is not a straight line. And you can see the serpent that belonged in uh, the claws of the eagle. And this is the northern claw and the southern claw of the eagle. And for Pluto to be right there, it tells me Pluto's more part of the serpent. And serpent literally means wisdom. But this whole sign right here was originally, you will find it right now, on the flag of Mexico. You will see the eagle with the serpent in its claws. So this is a very telling too, where your subconscious is concerned. And then again, you have uh, your subconscious in Libra and your moon in Pisces, and they are directly opposite each other. So I'm looking at a grand cross here. There's no doubt in my mind Saturn, Sun opposite Jupiter, Pluto opposite um, the Moon in Pisces. And the Moon kind of likes being in Pisces. It really does. And crawling into a day Moon in this week of your birth. But this right here tells me not only is there opposition between church and state opposing each other and the Sun kicking in energy for the state, but you also have a direct opposition in your subconscious and in your conscience mind. That what's going on behind the scenes here and talking about shadow work that needs to be done, this has to be done. And this is actually a big downfall. The Virgo generation with Pluto and Virgo are gonna be game changers, and, but you're gonna have to battle for it. Your wisdom, is truly in the subconscious, but your conscious mind of the moon don't want to play ball. It's opposing completely. Um, it's, it's almost like with this grand cross, it's almost like you are divided. And even here, when you see Mercury and Uranus in uh, the mind of the Sagittarian, the mind of the humanitarian, the communication, it looks good on the outside, Mercury and the humanitarian, but it can be bad on the inside. I can almost see, uh, wow, I don't even want to use that word, but uh, technology influencing you in a way that it, 
it will prevent you from doing your shadow work that needs to be done by 2020.